Hello everyone, welcome back to your physics teacher. Today we're going to be looking at section 1.4 from the Nelson textbook, which is just looking at the different type of graphs, how we can go from one graph to the other one by calculating either slopes or the area under the curve. So let's start off with our first question number two. And number two asks, from the velocity time graph, generate position time data and then plot the corresponding position time graph assuming the initial position is zero meters. So one quick way to remember how to go from one graph to the other is let's start off with our DT graph. And if we wanna to go to our velocity time graph, we need to calculate the slope. And from our velocity time graph, if we want to calculate the acceleration time graph, we also have to calculate the slope from the velocity graph. But we can go back in reverse by calculating the area under the graph. So there's a very good uh, memory aid to help you out. So I suggest that you write it down. So when you want to go from DT to VT, calculate the slope from VT to 80, calculate the slope, and in the reverse, you calculate the areas. So notice that in this graph, we have a velocity time graph. So if we want to go from velocity time graph into position time graph, what do we need to do? Calculate the area. So to calculate the area, we want to break down this graph into two sections where the motion changes from one type to the other type. So here the velocity is not changing. So we can say that the velocity is uniform. So that's going to be our first section. So in the first section, we want to calculate the area. So we can call this, wait, that's a bad color. area one and then in the next section where it changes its velocity and how is it changing its velocity is going from eight to six to four to two so we can say that it is slowing down so our next goal is to calculate the area in the second part but notice here that it is a triangle So to go from velocity time graph to position time graph, you need to calculate the area. But to calculate the area, break down the section of each graph where the motion changes. And in this case, we have two areas to consider. So for area one, we just have the area of a rectangle, which is the length times the width. And area two, which is a triangle, so we're just gonna do the base times the height divided by two. So let's look at the first graph. I mean the first area. So from zero to two seconds, that's the length. And from zero to eight seconds, that's the width. So what do we get? 16 meters. And in what direction? South, because that was the positive direction they assume. Again, I don't like how this textbook does that. They try to trick you with directions, like keep north as positive, south as negative. Is that too much to ask? But they're trying to confuse you, and I apologize for that on their behalf, their arrogance. So south, they're treating as positive values, which I don't like, but nonetheless, let's work with it. For the second area, we have the area of a triangle. So the base times the height divided by two. So the base is from two to six seconds, so that's four seconds. And the height is from zero to eight. So four over two is two, two times two, eight, 16. And positive, but positive in this case is south confusing. All right, 
So now we have the displacement in each section because that's what the area under the VT graph represents. So we have the displacement in the first section and we have the displacement in the second section. So now if we want to make our uh, position versus time graph we go from 0 to 2 seconds and from 2 to 6 seconds those are the key parts for time because that's how we broke down the time intervals and this is our position values but here we're going to assume that the positive direction is south so the whole time the motion is along the south direction. Now when you try position versus time graph, unless they specify where you're starting from, any starting point is okay. But recall that in this question, they specified it. The initial position you should take it to be at zero. So our starting point is at the origin, at the zero meters mark. And in two seconds, the displacement that took place was 16 meters. So that means that it's going to be at the 16 meter mark. And then from two to six seconds, it displaced 16 more meters. So what's 16? I think it's 32, right? Yeah, 32. So in other words, it adds up, it's cumulative. Area is cumulative. Let me write the word down. Cumulative. So the areas add up. So because the areas were both going the south direction, they add up more south. So 16 meters and then 32 meters. So although now we have the endpoints, We also need to consider the shape of the position time graph. So remember that I was describing the type of motion before? So in the first two seconds, the velocity did not change. So it was a uniform velocity. So how we represent that in a position time graph is going to be with a linear graph. Uh, check back the previous videos where I explain more about how to determine that. So this represents uniform motion. And in the next section, we have that the velocity values were moving towards the origin. So it was slowing down, but it was slowing down while still moving south. That's why here we have at the 32 meter mark. So slowing down towards south remember speeding up or slowing down is parabolic and if it's slowing down the tangents are decreasing so that's why i drew it in that particular shape so this is slowing down sorry about that so you can see it is very complicated to draw these graphs so that's why you should be practicing and try it out again on your own and see if you get the same answer from before that's my answer, I mean. Uh, if you're still with me, please hit a like, and that way you can help me grow my channel, and I'm going to keep, keep making these videos for you in grade 12. Okay? Question 3. Consider the position time graph shown here, and they're asking us, A, what is the position of the object at 5 seconds? So in other words, D at the five second mark. So they're just asking us to read off this data because what kind of graph do we have? Position versus time. So at the five second mark, what is the position? Is at that given point. So let's see if we can line it up.
So at this time of five seconds, the position is approximately 45 meters south. And once again, they've done it where they're making south be positive. Why do you keep doing this textbook? Don't be annoying. Just put north. It's easier for students. B, what is the instantaneous velocity of the object at three seconds? So notice here they're asking for instantaneous velocity at a specific moment in time. So let's identify that moment at the three second point. Because they are asking for the instantaneous velocity, to calculate that, you need to draw the tangent line at that point. But to draw the tangent line, you pick the point that you're interested in and the point closest to it, and then you draw a line connecting those two. So that's the tangent line. Then to calculate the instantaneous velocity, you calculate the slope of the tangent line from a position time graph. That's a lot to say, right? So let me just write it down. Okay, so now all we have to do is find two nice points. The first is the one that we're considering. So at the three second is approximately 18 meters. Right? So let's call this X1, Y1 and pick another point on the graph which should be easy to be seen, but maybe it's, there's no really nice one here. So let's pick this one here. So at the five second mark, what is the position approximately? 35. So X2, Y2. Now I did this because the slope is just the rise over the run, which is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And using the actual values that we're working with, so 35 minus 18, 5 minus 3, I need a calculator for this, 17 over 2 meters per second, and it's a positive value, but positive here, they're assuming to be south, which is really annoying. So that's the instantaneous velocity at the moment of time of three seconds. Okay, now for part C, they're asking us, what is the average velocity of the object's motion from zero to six seconds? So average velocity deals with the time interval. So from zero seconds to six seconds, you have to consider the time interval. So let me just clear my picture here. So we're interested in what happens from zero seconds to six seconds. So let's read off the data at the six second mark, which is approximately 65 meters. At the zero second mark, is zero meters. So the average velocity, if we want to be more precise, which I should have, is actually the slope of secant line of the position time graph. So I skipped a step actually. So the slope of the secant line requires for you to consider two points, which means a time interval. So let's put this into our values now. Oh wait, sorry, I should draw my ten, my secant line. Right, so now calculating the slope of that line by using the endpoints. 
So 65 minus 0, 6 minus 0. So it's 65 over 6 meters per second. And we got a positive value, but positive in this case, they're indicating it by cell. As much as I like them. Okay. Let me just get some coffee. Now, for question number four, it says use the data in the velocity time graph to plot the corresponding acceleration time graph. So quickly recall that we have a formula, not a formula, but a visual memory aid to help us out. So to go from one to the other one by calculating the slopes and the reverse by calculating the areas. So let's see what they wanted again. Here we have a velocity versus time and they want us to plot acceleration versus time. So to go from VT to AT, you need to calculate the slope. And this graph is really nice because it's just linear. So the slope should not change. So this means that during the zero seconds to six seconds, the slope is going to be a constant value. So let's draw our graph here. Acceleration. We're assuming, oh, I like this a lot better. The negative values are actually representing south. So positive will be north. Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you. Good. So the acceleration is just the slope of the VT graph. And because it's linear, the slope doesn't change. So all we need to do is find two points that are nice on the grid and calculate the slope in that way. So this is four seconds and negative 10. Mm. This one looks good. Six seconds and negative 15. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So I did this for my slope formula. So minus 15, minus negative 10. Be careful with the negatives here. Six minus four. Minus 15 plus 10 will be negative 5. 6 minus 4 is 2. So negative 5 over 2 meters per second squared. So this is the slope during the whole time interval. So this means that we're plotting in the negative values. So negative 5 over 2. And during the whole 6 seconds, this value is going to stay fixed. So this means a horizontal line. And that's how you draw the acceleration versus time. Uh, please practice these questions again on your own. If you had some trouble, uh, uh, it's a good idea to watch them, but then you should be practicing on your own. That way you can learn for yourself, okay?